All right. Good evening, guys. Gedimin is here, uh, actually broadcasting from sunny Lithuania. And um, today we're going to talk about customer onboarding system. So last, basically just to uh, come back a, a minute, uh, me and Irina recently returned from uh, Las Vegas where we attended a training called Beyond Leadership. Uh, this is a training run by the Network Marketing Pro and Eric Worry. And uh, at this training, um, Eric Worry talks a lot about systems because this training is like a more advanced sort of training. It's like $5,000 per person and mainly it's people from $100,000 a year upwards who attend this training and they really talk a lot about system, creating systems in your business because um, systems are duplicatable. Charisma is not duplicatable. Personality is not duplicatable. So if you've got a, if your main strategy is dazzle everybody with your personality, it might be awesome. It may work for you extremely well, but that may not be duplicatable because the people you bring into the business um, might not have such great personalities, etc. But if your business is based on a system, on a one, two, three, four, five steps, uh, on one piece of paper, then anybody can duplicate that because any people coming into your business, they can grab those few steps and do them, right? So last week we spoke uh, about the customer acquisition system, which means how to get the customers in. Uh, and we discussed some ideas and shared some ideas. If you missed that one, uh, you can always find it on our Facebook group or on my YouTube channel. The, the replay is there. But today we're going to talk about customer onboarding system. So once we, we got the customer through the doors, once we got the customer uh, buying a product, how do we keep these customers? Uh, uh, and that is quite important actually in the business because 5% increase in customer retention will equal to about 25% increase in your income as a network marketing leader because we're not just talking about you keeping your customers, we're talking about your whole organization keeping their customers. So you can really, really um, benefit you greatly if you have a great customer onboarding system. Now, when it comes to systems, there's few things you have to filter your systems. So when you're creating systems for your business, whether it's how to get customers or how to get distributors or how to uh, you know, promote events or how to do personal development within your team, you want to filter your systems through this filter. So you know that the system is successful if everybody knows it, everybody does it, and it works. That's when you know that the system is successful. Now, you'll know that you have a good system if a new person joins your team, looks at your system, for example, for customer onboarding, for keeping the customers in the business, and a new distributor joins your business and looks at your system and says, it looks easy, it looks like it's going to work, and it looks like I can do it. So bear that in mind. As we're going to be going through the weeks and covering different systems, You'll hear me saying that again and again and again, because uh, like Albert Einstein said, uh, any idiot can make things more complicated, but it takes a genius to make, th to make things more simple. So some of you are on this call are quite advanced. Some of you are leadership you know, type of people, etc. But you cannot create systems in your business for leaders. <laughs> you need to create systems in your business for a beginner, because if you have a system for a beginner, anybody can do it. The beginner system, the beginner can do it, but also advanced person can do it and a leader can do it. But if your system is leadership type thing, so you, you know, like your system is like, well, the first day you join, you have to do a Facebook Live. <laughs> it's an amazing idea. It definitely works. But how many people joining your business will do a Facebook Live on the first day? Maybe not so. Like, so think about it. Would the new person go, looks easy, looks like it's going to work, looks like I can do it. You know what I mean? So you really need to filter all the systems. And again, it has to be simple. You know, it has to be each system for your business, whether it's how to get customers or how to keep customers or how to get distributors or how to promote events should fit on one piece of A4 paper. If your system to get customers is 57 pages, <laughs> it's too complicated. It's too much. Most people just not going to even bother with learning it because it will just be too complicated for them, right? Okay. So... Getting back to customer onboarding system, uh, it's all about how do we keep more customers in. So the whole goal of your customer onboarding system 
should be to create a delightful experience for your customer. Think about the companies that you dealt with where you had a delightful experience with them. What did they do? How did they treat you? What sort of service did they give you to make you feel like, oh my God, this company is just amazing. Like, like I, I want to recommend them, right, to other people. So what you want to create is, 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 is a great experience for your customer. So that should always be in your mind. You know, how can I make this better experience for my customer? How can I make this better experience where your customers, um, you know, will be really, really happy with you and they will want to recommend you. They'll want to buy again from you. They'll want to uh, have a relationship with you, et cetera, and won't just look at you as a salesperson. So uh, one of the uh, things is that, you know, helping a customer to have an emotional connection with the product. You know, because there's one way we just buy a product, we sort of use it, et cetera. There's another thing where we really feel it, you know, where we really feel good about this product, where we really feel good about using this product, et cetera. So there's a few things I'm gonna go through what we should be achieving with the system, and then I'll give you a couple of ideas of mine. But again, you need to think for yourself, what is good for my team? What sort of system for custom onboarding would I like to have for my team? Because you may have different ideas, right? But again, always remember, it has to be, it has to look easy to do, it has to look like it's gonna work, and it has to look like everybody can do it, okay? So, so don't do something crazy like, you know, all you have to do is just fly into space and then do a commercial on television. And then it's totally awesome <laughs> because not many people will do that, right? Okay, so first of all, um, what we want to achieve, we want to create a proper product use. So anybody who's buying our products, are they actually using them at all? Like, and you might go like, well, why would somebody buy my products and not use them? You'd be surprised. Like I've seen people buy products for thousands of pounds and they're just sitting there packed in the boxes. They never even open them. They don't even use them, right? It's nuts, right? So first of all, are they using them? And secondly, are they using them properly? Do they actually know how to use the product? Now, you might say, well, that's really none of my problem. I sold them the product. It's their business, whether they're using it properly or not. But again, if we're coming back to that, creating that delightful experience, if we're coming back to that, uh, we want to create something more like emotional experience for this customer. We want to go the extra mile and help them to use the product. So, you know, uh, for example, like drain cleaner granules is an incredible product right? But the instruction says what? Take two spoonfuls of it, put it in a sink or a tub, and pour up one liter of boiling water over it. It does its trick, and then you flush it down with even more water. But guess what? There were people who would just pour half a tub of the drain cleaner, and it would stick solid in the pipe. And then it's like completely blocked, right? Because the customer wasn't using the product properly, because maybe he, nobody explained to him. Uh, another incredible story, <laughs> it actually comes from Irina's team. Uh, and I think that, 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 that case actually happened in Kazakhstan. Uh, now, in FM, we have the Fontanavi collection. And one of the face creams is called Caviar Cream. And the actual cream looks like caviar, like little black balls of cream. And you, would, you take it out, you scoop it out, and you apply it on your face. It's amazing cream, etc. But the lady who bought the cream put it in her fridge. <laughs> now her husband comes home, gets the caviar cream, puts it on the bread and eats the darn thing. <laughs> so again, just goes to show you need to educate your customers and maybe just warn the wife, you know, about the caviar cream, you know, but, but these things might be funny, but it can happen in your business, you know? So what you want to do is make sure that your customers, not only just buying a product for the sake of buying it, but they know how to use it. You know, like a simple thing with perfume, which we always tell people, don't rub it. Because when people rub the perfume, they're breaking the perfume molecules and it changes the smell. It's not the same. People should never rub the perfume and things like that. You know what I mean? So it's just about educating customers to have a great product use. Number two is creating raving fans. And pretty much everything that I just discussed is all to do with creating raving fans. With a customer going, oh my gosh, she went like an extra mile you know, to, to really provide me a great service. You know, he really supported me, you know, maybe giving a, a customer great after service, 
You know what I mean? So where we don't just sell the product, but we sell the product to the customer and we get in touch with them, you know, a couple of days later, how are you finding it? Are you liking it? Etc. Right. Um, you know, over delivering, you know, under promising and over delivering, whatever, whenever you can try to over deliver, try to surprise your customer, you know, great brands like Amazon and, and, and many other awesome brands, they always try to do that. They always try to over deliver, do things they didn't even tell you they're going to do. Well, you go, Oh, that's nice. Well, I didn't expect that to happen. You know what I mean? Because there's so many brands that are just lazy. They just do the bare minimum. You know what I mean? And, and, and leave you feeling like, you know what? It's like, not great. You know, like recently we bought a house and we were doing a lot of refurbishing and we were buying a lot of furniture and things like that. And it's surprising the different experience you get from different brands. Like we bought a Dyson vacuum cleaner and literally they delivered it like next day. Like in the morning, like, like I ordered in the afternoon, the next morning, eight o'clock, it was delivered to my door. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's so super quick, you know? But then there were other brands like Ikea where I would spend 700 pounds on furniture with them and they would still charge me like 40 quid for delivering. And I'm like, bloody hell, you know, like, like they're literally ripping you off, you know, like they made so much money of you, but they still will charge. You know what I mean? So some brands just do the bare minimum where the other brands really go out of the way to make you happy, to make you feel great, to make you, so you want to be that brand. You want to stand out where well, they go, oh my gosh, network marketing is awesome. Like I bought products before from the shops, but I didn't even, even get as close service from what I got from network marketing, from what I got to this lady, you know, and, and I always going to buy from this lady, you know, I'm an amazing fan, you know, and some of you been uh, like getting, you know, even your customers putting up, you know, little testimonial recommendation type posts to promote you. And that's like super awesome because that creates raving fans where people go, Oh my gosh, you know, it's just that person did such a great job. I want to promote them out, you know, and you know, uh, over communicating with your customer, you know, so, uh, so, really staying in touch and finding creative ways how to constantly keep in touch with your customers. Think about, again, big brands like Amazon. You buy something from them, oh my gosh, you're going to start getting some emails from them. You're going to get some promotions and things like that. You know what I mean? They really, you know, because they know about it. Like you may think, and I made that mistake when I first started uh, in the business, I thought, well, I sold, you know, six perfumes to this, to this beauty salon, to these three ladies. So surely when they run out of perfume, they'll start ringing me and, you know, ordering everything. Yeah, right. People, people are lazy. You know, they just look for easiest options. So next time the person is in duty free, and even though it's lesser quality perfume, and even though it's double the price, they'll just buy one there because it's convenient. So people look for convenience. So even though I thought people will start ringing me, etc., they wasn't, they weren't. And then my wife goes into the same beauty salon a few months later and they go, oh my gosh, we need perfumes. Thank God you are here. I'm like, everybody, all of you had my business card. All of you had my phone number, but it's just, it doesn't work that way. So you want to find like, you know, and, 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 you know, a good, great example is Coca-Cola. You know, like how many people do you think are on this planet who don't know what Coca-Cola is? Like, I don't know. There's a person who doesn't know what Coca-Cola is. So why the heck Coca-Cola keeps advertising? Why the heck they're putting advertisements on television? <laughs> they're putting billboards, etc., to remind you, right? Like, how could you forget? But they still do that to literally drum it into your head. So the next time you're in Tesco's or you're in another supermarket, you go, oh, Coca-Cola, let me get some, right? Because it's programmed into your brain. Same way you and your brand, you want to be so proactive that you're programming into your customer's mind to get it from you next time, to buy from you, to shop with you, and so on, right? And, 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 and we'll discuss some ideas on how you could do that. You know, uh, and also, you know, one of the things that you may want to uh, do is some challenges and some assignments. You know, people love a challenge, you know, so sort of before and after, you know, maybe 90 day before and after picks or seven day challenge or whatever, you know, thinking about how can you make it a, a fun and engaging where customers not only just bought a product, but they had an experience with it, you know, where they participated in a challenge or they uh, did a before and after or whatever, you know what I mean? Where they, where it just sort of, it, it, it connects them with you and your brand and your product, not just, you know, as a regular customer, et cetera. You know, maybe events uh, can help you do that too. You know, like having a product party or having like a tester event, et cetera. So think about what could you do? You know, could you do a text campaigns to your customers? Could you do uh, how to use product workshops? Maybe it could be a, like a Zoom like this, you know, I could 
pull out all of my makeup and start applying it and showing you how to use it, you know? <laughs> or uh, perhaps, you know, it could be a live event where you would attend and get to try products and see how they feel, et cetera, right? That could be an extra after sales service, you know, like an extra customer event and of course, opportunity to buy more products. Uh, you know, maybe uh, a place for your customers to find answers to frequently asked questions or maybe some videos, you know, tutorials on how to use certain products. And again, we've got some videos already made uh, in FM, especially with makeup products and, and home cleaning products and things like that. Um, maybe even if, if, a, some, if a customer becomes a preferred customer and actually registers with you, maybe just to show them how to use the back office and how to order products by themselves and so on, if they become a preferred customer, you know, how to attend, you know, the next event, et cetera, what's happening. Because you may think, for example, like this month on the 28th of September, we have a national conference. Now you may think, well, that's just for business builders. That's just more for my rock stars, right? And yes, it is for them mainly, but could you not invite your customers to that event? Totally, because imagine your customer attending the national conference, what image they would get of this company. And there's going to be 130 or 140 products launched at the conference. So your customer may really find something exciting, you know, that's going to be launched there, et cetera. But again, it's like you can, you can make it look like it's an extra service for them. So it's like, hey, you know, we have this event. Like, thanks for being my customer. Thanks for purchasing this first. And this month, by the way, as an as a after-sales service, as a thank you for you, this month we have an incredible event, you know, which you can attend and really learn more about our brand, about our products, and probably not for you, but also about how you could make a lot of money with our business. <laughs> and you never know. You may turn those customers into business partners as well, right? So, uh, you know, of course, you in order to 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 provide a great customer experience, you need to be a product of a product, you know, because if you don't use these products, it'll be difficult to advise your customers, to troubleshoot with them, to answer questions because you haven't had much experience with it yourself. So I would highly advise for you to try out as many products as you can yourself, especially the ones that you sell the most so that you actually can tell them, you know, how they work and if the customer has more questions and, and things like that. So again, coming back, the whole idea for you is to see how can I, not just get customers through the door, but keep as many customers as possible. Because businesses, big businesses understand that it's much easier to sell again to customer that already pulled their credit card out, that already pulled their wallet out, than to find a new customer. It's much more expensive for a company to find new customers than to sell again to existing customers. And that's why most companies will go out of the way to keep that relationship going with the customers. Whereas network marketing distributors, very often because it doesn't cost them anything to find new customers because they don't use like traditional advertising, it's just their work, it's their labor, they'll just choose to keep hunting new customers every month. And that's totally cool, but it just sounds like it's a lot more work than if you, you can still chase new customers every month, but if you keep reselling to existing ones, then your customer base is growing, your profits are growing, you're just making a lot more money. So. I'm just going to give you a couple of easy things. Again, like we said at the beginning, it should be, looks easy, looks like it's going to work and looks like I could do it. So three easy things that I would uh, perhaps advise you to have in your custom onboarding system. But again, like I said, you can think of different things. You might think, actually, uh, I would like to try this and I'd like to do this for my customers, et cetera. But one, one thing that definitely I would advise as an over delivering is extra sampling. So somebody orders a, a perfume from you or somebody orders a product from you uh, and you're sending them the product or you're delivering them the product or they're coming on, uh, over to collect your product, always put something extra in it. Why not put a perfume sample or two in there for them, another sample to try? So for example, if they bought a perfume from the floral collection, why not stick another few samples of perfumes from floral collection uh, and say, hey, you know, you like that one and I appreciate that and you may even like those. You know, when they released the limited edition uh, Joanna Pshetakevich uh, perfume, uh, one of our leaders actually bought like 20 or 30 bottles and she bought like full size bottles and she bought the samples. And then she sent out the samples, um, I think like 10 samples to her existing customers who buy all the time from her. She sent those samples. She's saying, hey, you know, we have this amazing limited edition perfume just came out. I really thought of you. I'd love you to try this and let me know how you think. I think like out of 10 people, she sent the sample, nine ordered the full size bottle. <laughs> it's just incredible, right? So again, giving extra samples, it, 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 it sort of, it over delivers and the customer goes, oh, I've got something for free. 
but again, it, 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 it creates an opportunity for you to have more sales because once the person tried a sample and it doesn't have to be just a perfume sample. You know, there are leaders who are doing uh, hair oil samples. So they just buy little plastic um, sort of containers from eBay where you can buy them by the thousand for a few quid. And they just put some hair oil in, in, in a little cup and give them to try or put some home product, you know, for them to try. Or, uh, you know, you can put, you know, a couple of days um, uh, of inner balance for somebody to try and say, hey, well, why don't you take this for three days and see how it, how it helps you sleep, see how it makes you feel. You know what I mean? So there's so many different things you could do to provide that extra value, to give that feeling, of, wow, I've got extra things. But in turn, that will create extra opportunities for you to sell and follow up with that customer. So if, if somebody bought a perfume from you and you included five days of inner balance for them for free to, to, to test it out if they want to, then you can follow up with that person after five days and saying, hey, you know, like, how, how did you find it? How did you feel? You know, what, 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 you know, what sort of sensations did you get from using this product? Or maybe it's vitality boost if they are low on energy. Or maybe it's whatever. You know what I mean? There's so many different products that you could give them to sample, et cetera. You know, um, some companies even do like a, like a borrow basket where, you know, you can give them like a, a basket of home uh, products, you know, where they can take home, try it out for a week or so and, 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 and really see how they feel. But that's more like about acquisition of customers, which we talked about last week, right? But it, giving extra samples, it creates that, that feeling of that I got something for nothing uh, and, it, and, and it over delivers and it's a great way of doing it. Uh, another thing uh, that uh, I, I could recommend is having a Fit6 group. So uh, as many of you know, in FM, we have this amazing program called Fit6, which is a six-month uh, weight loss program where we have the NutriCode food supplements combined with uh, a clinical nutritionist um, dietary guideline. So a person gets actual plan what to eat, uh, what, you know, what not to eat, and things like that over a six-month course. So you could have like a special group for people who go on the six month um, program for a weight loss. And you could have like before and after challenge combined with that. So somebody joins the group, first thing they do, they put the picture on and then they do the inner balance for the next six months. And then they stick the picture at the end of it, you know? And that's pretty cool. And that allows you to uh, build a relationship with your customer over the next six months and uh, advise them of extra products because, you know, like, like Fit6, first month is inner balance, second month is slim extreme, third month is whatever, right? We, we're going into that. But you could advise extra products like, you know, maybe beauty detox, maybe hair, skin and nails, maybe whatever works combined. Maybe it's metabolism coffee, maybe it's anticellulite balm, maybe it's anticellulite capsules to go together with that. You know, because if somebody's losing weight, chances are they've got some cellulite problems and things like that. You know what I mean? So you could, by, by creating that group, you're creating an experience for them. You're creating extra service and extra value for the customer. But in turn, again, it creates you opportunities to uh, have extra touch points with the customer, uh, promote extra products and things like that. So that's, again, it, it could be a good idea. Again, and it's, again, coming back to the thing, think about your new person. If a new person joins your business, could they include extra samples with the products? Probably they could. That's, that's pretty easy to do. It's not very complicated, not very difficult. Could they stick people on a Fit6 group uh, for your team? Totally, they could do that, right? So, so it's, it's simply duplicatable, right? Uh, and, and a third one that, that you could think about doing is a VIP customer group. So one of the biggest mistakes that I did at the beginning is I was not collecting any contact details for my customers. So I would go, because I'm Lithuanian, I didn't have many friends and family here in UK, but I wanted to have a lot of sales. So what I used to do, I would just go into beauty salons, hairdressers, estate agents, virtually any business in the local area. I'd walk in there, explain what I do, show them the kit and offer them to keep the kit overnight and that I would come back next day and grab the kit and I would collect my orders. But I would never collect the phone numbers, their emails, their face, well, Facebook was sort of just getting started at that time. So I wouldn't collect any contact details and I would just expect them to call me because I would include my business card, which most of the time wouldn't happen because they would lose my card and they would just forget, etc. right? So it's a great idea to create a VIP customer group for your customers. Uh, and even I would advise not to create a, a group, but to create a messenger chat group or a, a WhatsApp chat group. Because Facebook groups, unless the person is very active in that group, 
they will not see anything that is happening within that group because most of us, we are in hundreds of groups and we just never see the stuff that is happening in those groups unless we're actively in there. But if somebody is on a messenger chat group or they're on a, a WhatsApp group or a broadcast list, then the phone will ping when somebody's posted. So of course, don't go nuts on that group, you know, because it's a customer group. It's not a team group. So don't start posting there six times a day. But, but you could speak to your customer. Once a customer bought something, you can say, hey, look, uh, because you bought this product, uh, I would love to add you to my VIP customer group where I provide even further discounts. Uh, I do uh, pre-launch uh, offers for products where you can access products way, way before most of the other customers can access these products where you can find out about all the latest uh, uh, discounts and things like that. Uh, would you like to be part of that VIP group? So again, think about it. The, adding that person to your VIP customer group should be a benefit to them, not to you. Not like, Sierra, I'd love you to add you to my VIP customer group so that I could sell you more. <laughs> Are you excited about that? Not really, right? So you want to make sure that the customer perceives them being added to that group as a benefit to them. So this is a group where I apply even higher discounts, sometimes even like 50% off on products, where I announce all the latest, where I do some promotions, some uh, maybe price draws and things like, would you like to be in my VIP customer group? You know, And then that group allows you to stay in touch with your customers. So company launches a new product, you put it on that group. C company does a discount on pheromone collection, you put it in that group. Customer, you know, um, you know, you decide to do some promotion, you put it in that group. You decide to do an extra discount, you put it in that group. So you can then communicate with your customers. It's New Year's, it's Christmas time, you can put some offers. It's uh, Valentine's Day, you can put some offers. You know, it's National Lipstick Day, you can put some offers. You know what I mean? So you can become a lot more engaging with your customers and sell again and again and again and again and again and again to the same people uh, and they will become your raving fans they'll become like addicted to your products to trying out all the new products to trying out all the different things because most of our customers they might come in through um, perfume for example but then we can expose them to NutriCode and other products so somebody might come in through NutriCode then we might expose them to perfumes and things like that so we always need to think about how we can stay more in touch with our customers and how we can create a better experience and of course benefit ourselves by building that 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 community of raving fans of customers that really love our products they really love us and the experience that we created okay so that's really the customer onboarding system so uh, your homework really is to think about how can i create a better experience for my customers how can i keep more customers in my business instead of just letting them sort of disappear and fade away uh, how can i stay in touch with them uh, and and really just how can I build a massive customer base? And not just me, but how can I duplicate it with my team, right? So whatever customer onboarding system you decide to have, make sure that you, you share it with your team and you teach your new team members also to use this so they can, they can also retain their customers and their team members can also retain their customers and so on and so on and so on, where it creates a great opportunity and, and a lot more profitable business for you as a, as a business partner, okay? So that's it for today. Uh, next week, we're going to actually talk about distributor acquisition system. So how can we get distributors into your business? And again, I will share with you a bunch of different ideas on that. It's going to be the same link, same time, same place. So do promote it to your teams and, and, and invite them to join this call. Uh, as always, this, this was recorded. So I will share it onto uh, my YouTube channel and onto our groups. And then you guys can... Um, you know, tag your team is who missed this uh, training, etc. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining. Have a great rest of